Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this tutorial on the withdrawal of caution application process on the Ardisasa platform. A successfully registered caution is a prerequisite for this application. A withdrawal of caution is the deregistration of a caution by a cautioner. This is the person who plays the caution. This application is initiated by an advocate on behalf of the applicant. For starters, you'll open your browser of choice and type Ardisasa .lands.go.ke Once you land on the login page, key in your Ardisasa ID or national ID number as well as your password and then click continue. Upon doing so, you will be provided with a one-time password code OTP which will be sent to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and click login. You will then be navigated to the dashboard where you will find a number of services listed under the departments we have in the Ministry of Lands and Physical Planning. The account you are logged in with is your private account by default. For you to initiate this process, you will need to switch to your Advocate account. So go ahead and click on the profile icon. It will display a drop-down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as an Advocate. For more information on how to upgrade to a professional account, Check out our YouTube video through the link featured in the video description. On the landing page, navigate to the Land Registration section and click on View More. Here, you'll find various services under the Land Registration section and the process we are applying for is Caution. So go ahead and click on it. As you can see, there are various Caution sub-processes. Proceed and click on Withdrawal of Caution. You'll be directed to the Applications page and here, there are a number of tabs provided. We have five tabs, namely Pending, Ongoing, Completed, Rejected, and Cancelled. The Pending tab is for the applications that you have initiated but have not completed. They still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the withdrawal of caution application. The Ongoing tab features applications which you have completed but it's up to the ministry side through the relevant officials to work on it. The completed tab is for applications which you have completed and have been validated by the relevant ministry officials. The rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. Reasons for rejection will be communicated to the applicant. And the cancel tab is for applications that have been cancelled by any of the different parties involved in the application process. All applications that you have initiated as an advocate will be listed among the tabs provided, depending on the level of processing of your application. Please note that if you have not switched roles, the new application button will be unavailable. On clicking the new application button, you'll be navigated to a page with FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions specific to the withdrawal of caution application. You can go ahead and explore the FAQ to get an understanding of this application. Take a look at who the actors are, what is the execution, and what are the requirements needed for this application. If satisfied, click on Next. The next section is the caution details. Here, we first be required to fill in the parcel details. Go ahead and enter the parcel number in the format registry forward slash block and then the block number with no space in between forward slash the parcel number. You will then enter the caution entry number as registered on the land register. As mentioned earlier, this application comes after a successful lodging of a caution. As such, an entry was made on the register indicating further particulars of the caution. This is how the caution application looks like once it's approved, indicating the entry number. The next part is the cautioner details, where you are required to enter the Ardisasa ID of the cautioner. Once you have entered the Ardisasa ID of the cautioner, click on Search. A pop-up box will appear requiring you to select the category of person to execute as the cautioner. It can either be the cautioner executing on his or her own behalf or an attorney executing on behalf of the cautioner. If you choose the attorney option, you'll key in the power of attorney entry number in the format registry forward slash the entry number forward slash month of registration forward slash year and then click on search and the power of attorney entry number will be listed underneath the search bar along with his or her Ardisasa ID. If the Ardisasa ID does not feature, it means the attorney is not registered on Ardisasa 
and thus you will also be required to enter the RDSSR ID of said attorney and then click on save. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will choose the self option and then click on the save button. Upon doing so, the name of the questioner will be listed below and the name of the person executing on behalf of the questioner will be listed on the right. A key thing to note is that if you wish to change the questioner you picked for one reason or another, you can click on the remove button and you can then enter the correct antecessor ID of the questioner. You will then enter the proprietor details, where you will be required to select the category of the proprietor, then proceed to provide details pertaining to the identification type, which is either the identification number or the passport number for individuals and company registration details for a company. Proceed to enter the proprietor's name, the proprietor's contact number, and the identification number, then click on Add, and the proprietor details will automatically be populated and displayed on the right. In case you entered the wrong details, click on the Remove button and proceed to enter details of the proprietor. However, if the details are correct, proceed and click on Next. The next page is the withdrawal of caution details. Here, you will be required to enter the reason for withdrawal of the caution. This is a justification for the deregistration of a caution, so proceed to enter the reasons in the text box provided. And in our case, the caution placed was a purchaser's interest. As such, the reason for the deregistration of the caution is that the sale agreement was reached. And click Add, and the reason will be displayed below. In case you want to change or remove the reason entered, click on the X icon on the far right side of the displayed reason. The next part is the additional details, where you will enter additional details that the application is subject to, if any. Lastly is the law firm details, where you will input the details of the law firm that you are acting for. You have the option of tying the application to a registered law firm on RDSASA, where you will be required to type in RDSASA ID of the law firm and then click on search, and the law firm details will automatically be populated. However, in our case, you will be manually keying in the law firm details. To begin with, enter the name of the law firm. Also provide the physical address of the law firm. Provide the postal address of the law firm. You will enter the phone number of the law firm and you will also enter the email address of the law firm. As far as the website as well as the street address of the law firm are concerned, there are not mandatory fields to fill. However, you can provide the information required if applicable. You can then go ahead and click on Next. And you will be navigated to the Documents page. It is important to note that the documents you wish to upload should be in either the format .pdf .png or .jpeg. Here, you will upload the documents that you deem necessary. Kindly ensure that you upload documents supporting the withdrawal of caution application. To upload a document, enter the name of the document and click on the Choose File button to upload a scanned copy of the document you wish to upload from your local machine or device, and the document will be listed on the right. If satisfied with the documents you have submitted to facilitate the application process, you can proceed and click on Next. The last step is the confirmation page with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on Submit. You also have the option of going back if you need to edit any information. In this case, we will proceed and click on Submit. Upon doing so, you will be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click Yes. You will then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box which affirms that the application has been submitted successfully, and then proceed and click on Close. At this point, the questioner and the advocate will all get a notification on SMS on the system as well as on email communicating that the withdrawal of caution application process has been initiated. A key thing to note is that you can view the progress level of your application on the progress bar, as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. Subsequently, the advocate and the questioner will also be notified to execute on the application with a signature and also confirm the representation. The next thing is execution, which is for the advocate to accept or reject representation for the parties involved. So go ahead on the execution section and click on accept. Upon doing so, you will be prompted to approve on whether you want to represent the party, so proceed and click on Accept. And the party involved 
will be notified that the advocate has accepted to represent him or her in the caution application process. The last part is the Add Signature section, where he or she will be required to append their signature. There are a number of options on how to append your signature. To begin with, there is this signing area here, as you can see, which allows you to sign with your computer mouse if you are using a desktop or a laptop and alternatively with a stylus pen or your index finger if you are using a phone or a tablet to access the platform. You also have the option of signing with another device. When you click on this option, a pop-up box will appear displaying four alternative options for signing. All these options avail a similar signing area on another device for more comfortable signing. For more information on the available signing options on Ardisasa, kindly view our YouTube tutorial explaining the sale through the link featured in the video description. In this case, the advocate will sign on the signing area. He or she will place the cursor on the blank space, press and hold the left click button and then go ahead and append the signature. If satisfied, he or she can click on save. However, if not pleased with it, there is the option of removing it by clicking on clear and then appending the signature once again to their liking. If satisfied with it, he or she will click on save. There is a pop-up notification that will appear requiring you to affirm that you want to submit this as your signature. Click on yes, and the signature status will change to signed. It is key to note that the advocate must be in communication with the party involved throughout the verification process for ease of operations. The cautioner section shows that the party involved hasn't verified the application. As such, once the cautioner has logged in, he or she will navigate to the notification bell on the top right hand corner of the screen and check for the notification prompting him or her to verify the application. An OTP prompt box will be displayed with a get OTP button alongside it. It is important to note that below the OTP prompt box is a disclaimer for the party involved. It instructs him or her to only enter the OTP code if he or she authorizes the application made on his or her behalf by the advocate involved in the process. So if the individual is aware of the process and approves it, he or she will then click on the Get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to the phone number that he or she used during registration. After receiving the OTP code, the individual will then key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and click on the Verify button. Upon doing so, a pop-up box will appear affirming that the OTP has been successfully verified. So he or she will go ahead and click on Close. Below the OTP verification section is the Add Signature section where he or she will be required to append the signature. So proceed to append your signature and if satisfied, click on Save and affirm your signature by clicking Yes. And in doing so, the questioner has completed the application by consenting to the application. Once all the parties have signed, the Submit button will be active on both the Advocate and Questioner's account. So go ahead and click on it, and you'll get a confirmation message, Application Submitted Successfully. The application will then transition to the ongoing tab. So navigate to the ongoing tab, and you'll see the application we have just submitted. Click on the View button, and you'll see the application has progressed to the Land Registration Department. At this point, both the Advocate and the Questioner will get a confirmation message that the application has been submitted successfully. When the caution withdrawal application is approved, all the parties involved will get a notification on SMS as well as on email communicating that the application has been approved. The entry will be made on the register and the number communicated to the parties on the application. The registered withdrawal of caution will also be available for the parties. A call will be made to the advocate to collect the physical copy of the LRA69 which has the signature and stamp of the approving registrar. That's it for this tutorial on the caution application. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Kindly follow us on our social media handles as well at ardisasa underscore ke on Twitter and Instagram and at ardisasa on Facebook. Thanks for watching and goodbye.